Hello my preschool friends and welcome to our story time video. Today's story is House Sweet House written by Judith Bauer Stamper. Now what do you notice about this first picture that you see? Does it look real or is it drawn? It's real. So in this is photographs. So Judith Bauer Stamper found all the pictures for this book as well as wrote it. So she's the author and the photographer or um, I guess researcher. <laughs> so of course through the story I'm going to be asking questions and you can answer them and it's okay if you don't know the answer. All right let's get reading. House Sweet House written by Judith Bauer Stamper. Oops. Families live in all kinds of houses. There are big houses, little houses, plain houses, and houses in all colors of the rainbow. No matter what it looks like, a family's house is always a home. What kind of house do you live in? Wow, that sounds like a really cool house. Some houses are built for just one family. Other buildings contain homes for many, many people. In the city, many families may live in one tall apartment building. In a small town, families often live in separate houses with their neighbors close by. In the country, a family living in a farmhouse might be the only family for miles around. What, do you live in a tall house? How many neighbors are around you? Is it only you for miles around like you're living in a farm? Or do you live in a city or a town? I live in like a little town. I still have neighbors, but we still have some distance between us. Houses come in many different shapes. Some are square, some are round, and some are a surprise. An A-frame house has a long sloped roof that goes all the way to the ground. A-frames are often built in snowy areas because the snow slides right off. In one part of China, people live in tulos. A tulo is an O-shaped building with apartments circling the center. Some buildings are on the edge of the desert or shaped like beehives with people living inside. Have you ever seen any of those style houses before? They're pretty cool. People sometimes build houses out of whatever they find close at hand. In rocky places, people gather up stones, stack them on top of each other, and make sturdy houses that last a long time. In dry places, people mix together mud and straw, shape it into walls, and build houses from the earth. On tropical islands, people turn palm trees into cool leafy houses that let the breezes blow right through them. What do you think your house is made of? Oh. People build houses almost anywhere, near the water, under the ground, and up in trees. People along rivers build their houses on stilts to keep their families high and dry. Some people live underground in houses that are hidden from sight. Other people build houses high up in the treetops to stay safe from the wild animals. Most houses stay in one place, but some houses can travel along wherever a family goes. Sheep herders in Mongolia live in houses called yurts white tents that can be taken down, folded up, and carried to a new place. People who live on houseboats can anchor their home at a dock or travel up and down a river. There are even houses on wheels. Families can drive their mobile homes anywhere and have their houses with them when they stop. Which one of these would you rather have? Would you rather live on a river, live on the road, or travel wherever your animals go? Oh, that would be fun. Long ago in America, houses looked very different from the kind of houses we live in today. Native Americans built homes that fit their way of life. Those who traveled the Great Plains lived in teepees that they could move with them when they hunted buffalo. Some Native Americans built dome-shaped dwellings out of thatched grass. Settlers who came to America built log cabins in the woods. They cut down trees notch the edges of logs and stack them up to make warm wooden houses. Have you ever seen any of these before? 
Yeah, there's a couple around here. I We have a log cabin kind of house right near our building. Some houses are famous all over the world because important people live there. In the White House in Washington, D.C. is the home of the President of the United States and the First Family. Do you know who the President is right now? Yeah. Ooh. Buckingham Palace is the London home of the King or Queen of England. Visitors come to watch the changing of the guard. The Forbidden City stands in Beijing, China, is now, and it is now a museum. Long ago, it was the Imperial Palace of the Chinese Emperors. So important people have their own kinds of houses too. Houses give people protection, comfort, and warmth. A tent in the Sahara Desert that has sides that can roll up to catch breeze or roll down when there's a sandstorm. In the freezing weather of the Arctic, an igloo made of snow can become a temporary home for hunters or travelers. A house with a burning fireplace can make a family feel cozy and comfortable. So does your house protect you? What does it protect you from? Yeah, it can protect you from the weather and from things. Houses are places to eat, sleep, work, and play. Kitchens are busy places in homes all over the world. Families make everything from burritos to briannies to barbecues. Everyone has a chore to do around the house. It might be sweeping the steps, feeding the chickens, or doing the dishes. At night, a house is where you snuggle up, fall asleep, and have sweet dreams. There are all kinds of houses, and there are all kinds of families. Families are what make a house a home. Where do you live? What is special about your house? You have a very special home, too. The end. Thank you so much, my friends, for listening to the story. And I hope that you have fun at home today. All right, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now, my friends.